All right, today we're gonna to do some more troubleshooting. So first up here, we have a CineLog 35 V2 and a shaky issue. Hello, recently I acquired a GEP RC CineLog 35 V2, but I'm experiencing some shaking during mid-flight and some prop wash. I attempted to adjust the various settings of Mid Flight 4.4, but to no avail. In addition, I've analyzed black box, but have not been able to identify the issue. I've included some video of the flight on here on YouTube, but no log here, unfortunately. So I did ask him for the log, but don't have that just yet. So let's just take a look at the video and see what we see. All right, so yeah, these suckers are a little noisy. So I think that just back and forth there is probably just the sticks. You know, just, I would probably um, recommend adding more expo to your rates for some of this stuff. So what I do is I look at stuff like up here at the clouds. And I'm trying to look at the trees there. difficult the video seems to be skipping here a little bit let me uh, change this to HD hmm so yeah not uh, well there's a little I mean all right so there you see a little bouncy a bounce bounce so let's uh, check that out in slow-mo so if we come into here, check this out. Check out this flip. You can see a little jerk. It was kind of like back and to the right, back to the right. So, or back and to the left, I guess. Um, there, it would probably indicate to me to increase your yaw uh, terms. So for a cine lifter, I would definitely go into beta flight or a cine log, not a cine lifter. And I would definitely go into here and check out changing this from roll pitch yaw to roll pitch. And then these uh, pitch terms here, I, or these yaw terms, I would boost those up to 100 and 100. Uh, with ducted quads, I need a little bit more emphasis put on yaw authority. The other thing I would do, uh, didn't see that in here, so I guess maybe I wouldn't worry about it too much, but if you did get washout uh, coming down from some of those tree looks and it would kind of spin out and wash out, instead of if props are out, I would do props in. It was some testing I did on a, some sort of cine, I can't remember what it was. it was. I guess it was a cine log. Yeah, it wasn't a cine whoop, it was a cine log. Uh, showed that with ducks in that that mitigated it, at least on that quad. So uh, that's what I do for those. But if ducks in already, that's probably gonna, gonna get. Uh, it's not 100% gonna guarantee that you don't have any washout when you're doing drop-ins, but uh, it can help. That roll looked okay. It looked okay as well. I think the biggest thing in, for me, I, I think the biggest thing in this one, I, I, I don't see a lot of uh, issues in the light performance other than I think it's just jerky on the sticks a little bit. So it's not 100% everything. I don't have the log to go by, but definitely if you're looking to do some smooth flight, I would definitely check out your rates and make sure, personally, I would use actual rates for whichever rates you want to use and use plenty of expo. So either actual rates or, well, a number of the rate curve styles use expo, but I would not, you know, I would be generous with the expo big time. Uh, you know, I usually, for a cinematic kind of uh look and feel you know you really want to crank these up so it's really soft at the center stick you can still have your nice max rate uh by you know adjusting those up to whatever you'd like 
but uh, plenty of expo here and you can even make that even further and that will really smooth out the, the center of the stick to smooth out some of that that flying move so that's that's kind of what I'm seeing there the most is just uh, the rates and you know really getting the expo when I'm looking at this uh, we'll reserve judgment further until we see a log that might have some more intel on it but I think most of the 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 stuff that I'm kind of seeing in there is is just stick inputs all right next up uh, we have one here on the black box group I spent a fair bit of time tuning my flywheel explorer today 4.4.2 and I think I have it flying pretty much uh, pretty uh, much better than previously, especially with GPS rescue in flight. I didn't notice any issues as yet It seems smooth and tracks well, but attached is the final log I took after tuning I noticed the roll seems to have a lot more noise and the pitch and the D term is getting very active on it I would love someone with a bit more knowledge than me that it could take a look at it and see what they think throughout the day when doing the step response plots in PID toolbots, I did notice uh, the roll was nice and smooth uh, versus pitch. Not from this log. This is just a test flight on the current PIDs after the day. I have pitch running with slightly higher gains than roll as this seems best from the plots. I've also noticed on a full throttle punch that the motors are only hitting 85% max throttle. Am I right in assuming that this is because a VBAT sag compensation is on? Yes, probably. So uh, let's open this up and take a look. Okay, so uh, there was one comment and the gentleman uh, expressed that the denoise was a little bit too much for his liking. And I agree. <laughs> That's a, there's a lot of, a lot of denoise here. So we need, uh, we need some more filtering. Doesn't look so bad when you turn off Expo, right? You just look at that. But either way, you can see all that noise here uh, happening from this. So this is, uh, Assuming uh, VBAT PID compensation is turned on, then that max 80% throttle, 85% throttle is because of that. I have to look in here to see where that's at. Hey, I just noticed in here what, what we're having for D terms up here. So 144 max for D term, 182 min D terms, 108, uh, 135. That's, it's just too high my my friend that's that's too high um so what is this flywoo explorer yeah that that's just too high for a flywoo explorer so yeah that that it, for with gains that high you're gonna have to apply a lot of filtering and, and here too you're very uh aggressive with the filtering so you have your low pass filters completely turned off and you're just using the RPM filter or dynamic notch here uh, with a 500 Q and then three harmonics on the RPM filter. And then you have a, uh, I, I don't know, you know, a fairly conservative, not crazy conservative uh, D-term filtering. But it's just with these high gains, you're not going to be able to do this and this at the same time. And I, I would say that I would, yeah, this could be okay. I wouldn't get too crazy with that but these gains probably need to come down some especially with a flywheel explorer like i said just a lot of denoise uh you're not going to get you know because of the vbat pid compensation being on that's why you're getting the lower throttled amount here uh as your battery sags down that should start to increase that but we, this isn't a super long flight so you should start seeing these numbers kind of trend up as that battery goes down like if you look at these how high these are getting um, at the beginning of the flight versus how high they're getting at the end hopefully just see that a little bit yeah you can kind of see it there a little bit how it's generally trending up a little higher um, between the two uh, in the beginning of the end flight and then obviously as the battery sags out even more this will keep getting higher and higher and higher but I would definitely, uh, just like the other gentleman that responded on this, I would pull down your master multiplier slider uh, so your D gains aren't so high and or um, turn on some of this low pass filtering. I usually try not to get crazy with reducing, taking off this low pass filtering, but uh, teach their own. I think these uh, PIDs are a touch high. Um, that would be my best advice it does look like it's tracking well though so i mean it is your quad if you're liking how she's flying and if i just look at kind of the tracking 
uh, on this and, uh, uh, you know, turn off the exaggeration, the expo, and see how well that's tracking. You can see here she's tracking, you know, pretty tight uh, for some of these moves that you're doing with it, uh, especially for a Flywheel Explorer, which is not, you know, not a very powerful quad. So, yeah, the tune's not looking bad, uh, it, like on the ratios of everything. I just feel like the the filtering to the height of the master multiplier is a little off. Either add some more filtering and, re you know, that's what I would do, or do both. Combination, add a little bit more filter and reduce that master multiplier. What you're really trying to do is, you know, we're trying not to get these spikes here in the motors. You know, you're commanding the motor to go up to 100% and then all the way down to, I don't know, it, it's getting pretty low here, all the way down to like three percent so you're commanding the motor to go way up and then way down and way up and way down and that's you know uh obviously that's what would normally lead to motor heat the other thing you can do is if you do have throttle you know you can see that that's a lot of the spiking is really when he's highest on the throttle it's not entirely the case all the time but i guess for just in general for other folks if you're looking at like you have a lot of uh, determ spiking and stuff just when you're hitting 100 percent throttle Another trick I've imposed is just go into your rates tab. Oh, no, back under here. Go into your tab here. This TPA is set to D term only. This is your TPA rate. Is This is how much you're going to reduce that D term. Um, so instead of 65%, you could take that to uh, maybe like 80%. You could leave it at 65 as well. And then change the break point to be where you start to get that uh, higher throttle oscillation. So you kind of look in here, you can see it is at around 1650 uh, that starts to occur. So we could set this at like 1650. And then what it will do is it will start to ramp the D term down uh, when it gets to that that break point, the, the 1650. I actually adjusted it here. It's supposed to be 1650. And it will reduce the pitch by, you can see there, 80 percent of the D gain by 80 percent when it gets to 100 percent throttle between 65 percent throttle which is this 65 percent throttle and 100 percent throttle by the time it gets to 100 percent throttle it will reduce the gain D gains by 80 percent which obviously that will uh, reduce how much it is magnifying the noise uh, when you're ramping up here to this higher throttle amount as so I go like that and you know then you won't get these vibrations you hear your motor spin up and whine a little bit more in a good way you know they're getting to their max rpm well that's going to do it for this one but to exit out did you know that beta flight is hosting a competition freestyle competition uh entries from september 1st to september 30th you can see the more details here if you go to the beta flight discord you can check out the announcements page for that looks like you do competition video posts uh, under competition videos right here um, for discussions or anything, questions, comments, whatever. They will be judged, it looks like, here in October, and there will be prizes. It doesn't really list what you know, great prizes available to win. Don't know exactly what that is specifically. But, hey, um, I think one thing that they're looking for, because it, it's probably these prizes are you know, being offered through these sponsors is that the entry videos use this splash screen uh, when you can download this from here and the actual uh, pack of information is here as well to uh, add to your OSD. So if you're interested in something like that, yeah, check it out. Do a freestyle clip, throw it up there, maybe you win something. Um, and, you know, it can be a little fun thing. It's almost like iGow to some extent, just very much shorter. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope this helped. A nice, short, sweet one this week. I'm working on some other stuff. Thanks, everybody. See you on the next one.